All right, back here on Inside Wrestling Radio uh, with Melissa Coates in the house today. And again, we greatly appreciate you coming in, Melissa. And uh, when it's we left a off, pleasure. When, <laughs> when we left off, we were talking a little bit about your early uh, career and stuff like that. And I want to move forward a little bit about when you uh, moved in and was working there. And uh, you worked at Ohio Valley first, right? Yeah, yeah, that was great. I loved my time. I so, how, how did you get brought to from just Indies up into Ohio Valley? Were you seen somewhere, or did you just go up uh, there and yeah, take a I shot seen somewhere? I, I, Dr. Tom came out to show out at UPW. I was living in California, so I was at UPW for a while. I kind of have gone to a few different schools, just some, uh, you know, for moving around and trying out different things. And um, I, uh, I ended up, well, I was invited to train at OVW from Danny Davis, and I believe, you know, he, he thought I'd be a crowd pleaser because of my background and all the magazines right. and bodybuilding, you know, being a big blonde you know, girl, muscular girl, looking yeah. the whole California thing. So I got invited to train out there, and it was great. That's that's where I really kind of consider the beginning of my training started, because mm-hmm. um, it was just it was good training. You know, Rip Rogers was training us there, and you know, he was hard on us, but I mean, you know, very old school. He's very strict about stuff, but I learned a lot from that man. You know, it was it, it was easy to learn from him. And then of course they'd have trainers in, like you know. Um, Bill DeMott would come in, Lance Storm was, uh, and came in at some point, JBL would come in, you know, various people would come in each week, Dr. Tom would come, come in, and, you know, they would put in, um, you know, their two cents as well towards their training, but I, I, I really miss those days, those were, those were great days. Yeah, was yeah. there a lot of one-on-one in those uh, training days, or was it like a group session type deal? How did it they it do was the typically group stuff, I mean, they, they would have us break off into pairs and kind of go from person to person doing chaining, and and stuff like that, but, um, you know, it's mostly, like, classes, you know, the whole thing with wrestling is you know, working with other people and, um, you know, feeling comfortable with other people, so, you know, some of it, you know, the the instructors will come around and check you out, like, during your training, make sure you're doing stuff right, but a lot of it's group stuff, like drills and things like that, and just working well together. Sure. What? Who Who did you learn, you feel like you learned the most from while you were there? I would say Rip Rogers. Mm-hmm. You know, he, um, he was very, you know, he, he was a bodybuilder himself, and gotcha. so he tended to like the more muscular girls. He, so he always had a good laugh deal. watching me do stuff. <laughs> yeah, so... So he he was he was pretty supportive of me and Danny Davis was as well and Jim Cornette was always really cool but you know Rip because of his background in bodybuilding he mm. you know he always li- really liked Linda Miles and you know I got along great with Rip and you know I learned a lot from him right yeah and you worked with most pretty much every diva that's on television right now uh, they were coming a great up, deal of them yeah, yeah yeah and they were coming up through the through the same time of training that you were right while you were all kind of down well there I used the same to bodyguard time. Jillian right Jillian Hall and. uh you know, I used to, um, Mickey, Mickey and um, Jillian used to have a feud going at OVW, so I used to work with Mickey a lot, too. I just did a three-way with her at Maryland Championship Wrestling with Mia Yim and, and Mickey. And it was great working with her again. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had a really good time doing that. Gotcha. When you left, uh, how long were you at OVW? I was there about a year and a half. Okay, and you left there and went down to Deep South, is that right? Or you yeah, went back yeah. to the Indies for a little while? Well, I, I went up to WXW for a while. Um, and... Um, I eventually got, uh, I went to WrestleMania, actually, and Tommy Dreamer hooked me up with Bill DeMott, and then I ended up going to Deep South. Gotcha. So I, I was I was there as well. Um, Deep South, I was there until it closed down. I think I was there maybe a year, probably less, just because it got shut down <laughs> we, by yeah. the WWE at one point. Yeah, and that's the thing. We, we actually, you would get it sporadically here, and, uh, and I don't know, we would show a week or two, and then it would be away for a week or two. But I remember catching some of, right as you were coming in, and the interesting gimmick you were doing was the bag lady deal. Yeah. What, what was the story uh, behind the bag lady? Well, the bag, it actually is so funny because I bumped into Danny Gimondo up in, in New York. I work up in the New York area a lot, New Jersey area a lot, wrestling. And uh, Danny Gimondo was, was down at Deep South, and he was friends with, with Luke Gallo, you know, of course, yeah. is Drew, or I call him Freakin' Deacon because that's Deacon, who he was sure. when I was there. Right. Just, I, I guess one day I was in the, the ring, and, and, you know, Gimondo's, like, looking in the ring saying, you know what, you need, uh, Drew, you need a... Uh, you know, what if the freaking Deacon had a girlfriend? And I was in the <laughs> ring, and I just got there. And I guess, like, my hair must have looked crazy and wild because it was, like, the, you know, I have really wild curly hair. Yeah, had the curls going. And, like, in Georgia, <laughs> forget it. If you're sweating on top of the humidity. So I must have just looked crazy or something. I don't know. So then Jamondo's, like, looking up at me and, like, and what, yeah, you need a girlfriend. And Drew's, like, who? And he goes, like, 
how about Melissa? So so (laughs) Germano tells the story much better than I tell it. It's 10 times funnier when he tells it, but that's kind of how it happened. And actually, you know, Jody um, Hamilton already had a gimmick that they wanted me to do that I ended up switching over to the bag lady. But I mean, it was a lot of fun. It was, you know, I I made her, you know, interesting. It was loosely based off an idea about like, you know, a uh, fitness model who, mm-hmm. like, uh, her money gets all embezzled, and so now she lives on the street, of course, you know, I still wear some makeup, and, right. you know, I have some vanity still, and then, you know, <laughs> I have a whole bunch of pop cans and stuff, like soda cans in my, my, um, my grocery cart, but, you know, and there are some of my old <laughs> magazines and my trophies and stuff, so, right, you know, yeah. I save the most valuable parts of my life, but I'm sure. bitter and angry, and... You know, yeah. <laughs> one day I'm rummaging through garbage and Deacon gets out of his sewer where he's sleeping and he hears me. He's like, you know, he's PO'd because, like, I'm making all this racket and he comes up and starts yelling at me, stares at me, and I slap him in the face and he falls in love. Yeah, yeah. You know, so so then he's rummaging through the garbage getting me French fries. And, like, like we just, it was so ridiculous. It was so yeah. funny, though, and people yeah. loved it. And the office was actually interested in it. Like, we did go up to SmackDown and, and they took a look at it. I think what ended up, you know, coming back through the grape one is that... Um, Vince thought it was um, two nineteen eighty. So then, oh really? Yeah, which was too bad because fans really liked it. It was yeah. something that you know little kids could get into. It wasn't you know, you know, it, it was just something different. It was a gimmick. You know, kids got into it. It was just refreshingly different than sure. just the same diva over and over again. You know, and there was exactly, yeah. and there was the ability for for you know the bag lady to have a makeover and get back to her fitness model self. Right. So you know you could still, which we did at Deep South Television. We right. had the bag lady do a makeover with Chrissy Bain, which was like ridiculously funny. Yeah. It, it was yeah. it was really good, and um. You know, I had her pick up my... I, I had Chrissy wearing, like, um, plastic gloves to pick my clothes up when I was taking my first shower and God knows how long. It was, like, hilarious. And then at yeah. the end, I'm all, like, after the makeover, I'm wearing this glamorous dress and my sure. hair is all done. I'm like, you're beautiful. It's like, it was so funny. Yeah, it, it was It was actually really, really well done. And I like the the thing, the little subtleties of keeping the trophies in the magazine and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Around, you know, you know, that, that's just something, you know, most people wouldn't People really wouldn't liked it. Of, you know, yeah. I, I used to get money from, like, guys. Like, we'd go to Subway and... <laughs> do like appearances and guys would be like is that really your boyfriend like they'd be hitting on me and like it was so i'd get like five dollar bills before we get out of here though we're really quickly when you talk about this lingerie football league tell us about that real quick and then you're with the philadelphia passion yeah i actually it's it's awesome news i actually am just starting up with the lingerie football league which is on mtv too it's it's so cool too because i was in baltimore doing a show i saw it on tv for the first time and i was like wow how do i get involved in this the next day i flew home from baltimore i went straight to a restaurant and uh, this coach who was a fan of my fitness, mm-hmm. I, I mean, this referee from the league, um, recognized me in a restaurant. Um, I guess he had followed my fitness career. And, um, you know, what's the likelihood of that happening? And right. one day I see it, and the next day the coach sets me up with the Philadelphia co- um, the referee from um, – from one of the referees from the league sets me up with the, the coach in Philadelphia. So I did a tryout. You know, I, I had to do a lot of arranging because of my, my schedule for wrestling right now. But I did a tryout last week and surprised myself. I'm actually fairly agile. So I was like, Better I was like, wow, I had no idea. I was yeah. actually this agile, you know. So I was like whipping all over the place, grapevining and running backwards and sure. stuff like this. And, yeah, I'm going to be starting up with them shortly. Um, their next game is December 10th up in New Jersey. Um I'm not sure if they'll let me pay that play that game yet because I'm just starting. They're, the season's half over, and they're actually going out of their way to get me on the team as it is. Sure. Um, not sure I'll be at that one, but, you know, you just check out the website. Google Lingerie Football League. I think it's www.l... L-F-L? It's like, yeah, it's like LF ls or dot com or something like that i don't know they got like four letters i think instead of got you we'll, we'll two, but it's not hard to find Just we'll look it up and bring it back for you to the end of the end of the show here and we'll definitely get that website out for you but it's lingerie football league on mtv2 and should yeah, be playing philadelphia with, passion i'm gonna help them win the lingerie bowl there you go they're gonna be doing the big lingerie bowl and uh, look for that's gonna be february 7th i believe in las vegas and uh I think we're neck and neck with the, I think the Chicago Bliss in uh, our division. You know, there's um, East-West divisions, and um, I'm really looking forward to being part of a winning team here. It's going to be great. Very cool. And it's so funny, because I wanted to play football when I was eight years old. My parents wouldn't let me, you know, <laughs> yeah. and then here I am, like, and here you are. granted, I'm wearing, like, you know, hot pants and, and a little <laughs> sure. top, but... Right. You know, like uh, years later, it comes full circle. Comes right? full circle, exactly. Well, Melissa, best of luck to you. And we really, again, appreciate you well, coming you. in. And, and sorry you're under the weather there a little bit, but yeah, uh, I, but you're tough. I'm sure you'll be able to kick it here pretty quick. I hope so. <laughs> and then, uh, again, thanks for coming in and best of luck to you. 
and then we will see you again in the future, I hope. And check out my website because I have a lot of wrestling dates coming up as well. Definitely. What is that website? And I just got back from Puerto Rico, which okay. was really cool. We'll give out I'll the website. the Dominican Republic coming up soon, too. My website's melissacoats.com. Very cool. All right, we'll be right back to close out the show with, uh, with Thomas, Melissa, Charlie, and myself right here on Inside Wrestling Radio. <laughs> 